This is the Mission Jurassic site, which is a whole square mile, some 640 acres. And it has rocks which are ranging from 165 to about 150 million years ago. And they also go from marine to freshwater or land deposits. And it's in these upper layers which were laid down on a floodplain in the Jurassic period that we have the dinosaurs. And there's multiple dinosaur fossils in several quarries that we've opened up over the last few weeks and months and years. About 150 million years ago, this would have been a very, very nasty place to be. The stink of rotting flesh would have been utterly disgusting. As the vast carcass of a sauropod dinosaur with a long neck, long tailed dinosaurs was oozingly breaking down. Very often, we talk about dinosaur bones being washed down a river system and being trapped in a log jam type environment. But very, very rarely are there any examples of fossil logs associated with the animal. But that is precisely what I'm looking at here. There's a huge trunk of a, a tree that continues under here. And this brown lump is a fossil log. So this really was a log jam of rotting dinosaur and plant material. Here we are in the lower sauropod quarry. And with the lower sauropod quarry, you're dealing with this lovely mudstone. And this mudstone makes it really easy to dig. So that means that we can almost use things almost like a spoon to dig. We also use things like trowels and uh, bannets, which are very, very dull, not sharp, I will say. <laughs> and these are great tools in this type of environment. And what we're getting here are articulated, semi-articulated, and disarticulated sauropod bones. If there's one thing that makes a paleontologist really happy, it's if the bones are articulated, not just associated, you know, that there's a bone and there's a bone and scattered around and all these pieces of the puzzle should be a skeleton somewhere, somehow. But here, up there and also down there, there's now a few chunks where the bones are really nicely articulated. So they're in their initial original orientation. So this tail vertebra goes in the next vertebra. So they're still all just laid out like like what the animal was so it means that it got buried before the scavengers had a chance to uh, to, to really rip it apart the other week i was digging down on this corner of the quarry and uh, i was really hoping not to find bone and it's rare that you hear a paleontologist say that you usually want to find bone but we were trying to trench around so we can actually create a package of backbones vertebrae but lo and behold, I was going down, I was finding no bone, I was so excited I was not finding bone. And then I hit something, I thought, oh no, that's hard. And slowly what started out from a few square millimetres became quite a few square millimetres. In fact, now this, this femur is, is, is big. The head of the femur is here, that would go into the hip socket of the animal. We're going down the shaft of the femur here, it does look like a tree trunk. I'm going down to the back of the knee here and the back of the femur is here hiding underneath this vertebrae. So the femur, if I was to put it up against me, would be approximately that high. <coughs> so you're dealing with a really, really big bone and it weighs, when you prep them out, this one weighs a little over 200 pounds. So it even weighs more than me. We're having to overcome some huge problems with regards to getting some vast bones out of the ground. We have a problem that our dinosaurs are too big. <laughs> That's a problem most people want to have. And every bone that comes out of this quarry, the best thing to do, to do for the bone itself is to jacket it like what I'm doing. The more stabilization, the better. This is the messiest part of the job, but I think the best part, because it's that final step of getting it out of the ground and that much closer to bring it home. 